Fallout 76 is a huge game with lots to learn which may seem a little bit daunting at first when you start playing. For that reason I wanted to put together 25 helpful tips to set you on your way across the wasteland. This though is one of many guides I have on the channel with more to come so if you find this one helpful make sure to click on that like button and subscribe so you don't miss any future videos. Let's begin. Fallout 76, unlike any other Fallout game, is an online game, so don't be scared to join a public team as it comes with many benefits. Firstly, of course, you get to meet other players, and luckily for you, the Fallout 76 community is one of the most generous out there, and you will most likely be gifted plans and resources. And being in a team also allows you to fast travel to other players' camps for free, saving you caps, and helping you find new locations. Finally, if you are going to join a team, I'd definitely recommend joining a casual team, as this will help you boost the amount of XP you get gain while playing. Resources play a huge part of this game so don't be scared to pick up as much junk as you can carry and then scrap it all in and store it in your stash box. Junk is used for crafting and repairing weapons and armour as well as building up your camp and no doubt at some point you'll probably need that random bit of junk that you picked up. Choosing your location for your camp can have a big impact on your game. Cams can be used as a free kind of like anchor point for you to fast travel to and if you choose wisely it can be a great tool for building up your resources and your caps if you make use of your vendor. If you want to make caps make sure to place your camp beside a popular spot like the White Springs as you will get more visitors checking out your vendor. Now no matter what level you are in the game, checking other players vendors is a great way to obtain unknown plans, rare gear as well as ammo and consumables. If you're on a new character, going to a players vendor is a great way to build up your crafting knowledge as most people do sell plans for very very cheap prices, but be careful if you are deciding to sell stuff at your own vendor in case you do sell some rare gear for way too cheap. There's many stories out there of people getting very rare items for like 50 caps, so just be careful. Another great way to get a lot of items for free is to check out the donation boxes at train stations and other points of interest like Vault 76. Not only does the game randomly spawn items in them, but players can also leave donations in these boxes for new players to come and pick up. And when you obtain all these new plans or recipes from either other players, events or vendors, be sure to check the notes section in your Pip-Boy and read them, otherwise they will stack up and they'll add up to a decent bit of weight, which could help in making you over encumbered. Now all of us in the game do hoard ammo as realistically you never know when you're actually going to need it. Now the risk with this though is it can actually weigh up to quite a lot and also make you over encumbered. For that reason don't forget to actually go through and check your ammo in case you're carrying stuff like missiles or mini nukes as these will definitely rack up and take a lot of space in your inventory. As a low level and new to the game, most people will rush in and buy perks which you don't actually need, which can slow your player progression down in terms of damage resistance and damage output. Don't waste perks and level ups on things that you don't need all the time like lock picking perks or a perk for a different class to the weapon that you actually mainly use. Have a little think about it and you don't need to rush in to actually choosing the perk. Once you start stacking up your levels and hit level 50, you will gain access to legendary perks. These are a great addition and can help you maximise your build and perks even more. Here you can pick out perks to boost your special stats, so you can select more perks or gain more XP if you choose intelligence. On top of these though, you can also find other legendary perks which give you cool abilities like making your enemies explode and also doing a bit more damage. Public events in Fallout 76 are one of the main bits of content in the game providing you with lots of cool rewards and also a lot of fun. These are also a great way for gaining XP and meeting other players. Keep an eye out on the channel as well for limited time seasonal events including like the Mothman Equinox that we've just had or Fash Now or Meat Week which tend to come up at least once a month and have exclusive rewards to them. Now for extra help when deciding on a public event, make sure to hover over them on your minimap before actually joining. This will tell you the possible rewards and also how many players are playing the event, which is very important as if you go, let's say you're level 20 or something and you go to join an event and there's no one there, it might be a kind of good idea to avoid that one, just in case you go and get bullied. However, on the opposite side of things, if you see a lot of people at an event, don't be kind of put off by it, this will be a great way to help you level up and also just to get to experience the event. In addition to public events, there's also expeditions which recently got added into the game over the last year or two. Now expeditions allow you to travel to other places of the world outside of Appalachia. In these you can complete challenging missions that in turn give you access to even more rewards and also stamps which is a currency that you can use to buy camp plans, weapons and armour as well as mods from Giuseppe in the White Springs. 
And if you want to test out your skill, we also have daily ops, which take place in different locations in Appalachia. And these can be played with up to four people and also have their own loot pool of rewards. Daily Ops is also unique in its own way as you're actually timed on completing all of the objectives and the quicker you do it the better the rewards will be. On top of these rewards you will also get a great bunch of legendary items from Expeditions and Daily Ops so definitely be sure to start doing them. In Fallout 76 if you want to truly make your character powerful you're going to need to utilise legendary gear. Whether that be weapons, armor, or power armor, all of these play a role in how powerful or resistant you are to dying. For weapons, keep an eye out for bloodied, anti-armor, two short, or even quad legendary effects, as these are some of the best you can get and most popular. There are many others as well which can be useful depending on your playstyle and your build, but no doubt these are the most popular ones to keep an eye out for, and you might be able to even sell them for a decent amount of caps. Armor wise, unyielding, bolstering and vanguards are a great way to go depending on your building playstyle once again, but there are also many different variants depending on what you want to go for. Now Fallout 76 has a lot of currencies which can be a little bit confusing at times, but don't worry, in time you will get used to it. The main ones to watch out for is caps, gold, stamps and also legendary scrip. Caps are the generic standard currency you use at vendors and at fast travel. Stamps are the expedition exclusive ones that are used to buy plans and gold is earned through trading in your treasury notes which you can gain from public events. Now you can trade in treasury notes at Foundation, Creator and also inside the White Springs Mall and for more information on them I do actually have a full guide but to be honest guys if I'm talking about all these currencies we could be here a while. The final one I mentioned was Scrip which is gained through scrapping in your unwanted legendaries and used to try your luck at the Pavia with a lucky legendary dip, we'll call it for the sake of the video. The RNG though can be pretty rough on this, so you can also go down the route of buying modules and then actually crafting the weapon that you actually want, trying to get a legendary version of it that you will actually use and utilise in your build. Now each currency actually has its own limit that you can carry. This has changed a lot over the years, so if you're watching this a while after the video has been uploaded, it may be worth double checking these just in case any's been updated. As it stands though, as of April 2024, the limits are 40,000 for caps, 10,000 for gold, 6,000 for scrip, and 10,000 for stamps. Now another currency in this game is atoms, which can be earned through the seasons, bought with real money, or even earned through completing challenges. If you are new, make sure to look through your challenges and see what you can do to actually earn some, as a lot of them are very simple and a nice easy way to just build it up. Once you've got some, these can then be spent in the Atomic Shop to get some cool new items. Now there's some of the main tips I want to give out, so here's some miscellaneous ones which kind of will help you as you're just wandering around. Now a great way to unlock mods for your weapons and armour rather than buying the plants is going to be crafting and then scrapping them in. This can be expensive resource wise early on, but it's a great way to help you unlock unknown mods for the weapons and armour that you're using. Sleeping actually provides you with an XP buff. Lie in a bed and wait for the well rested to pop up in the top corner and this will grant you a 5% XP buff for one hour. So definitely make sure to have a little sleep every time you log on. Keep an eye out for watchtowers in Fallout 76 as climbing up them and scanning the area will also help you spot new undiscovered locations helping you kind of identify and explore the map a little bit quicker. Now if you're finding yourself getting killed by a lot of green rears of the Scorch Beast, put on the perk Fireproof as this will block out the damage from these beams. One of the biggest struggles for new players is running out of ammo at the start of the game and a way to stop this is actually searching the loot of all the enemies you kill as with contextual ammo this will drop the ammo that you actually are using to kill the enemies. As mentioned earlier, you can use teammates camps as a free fast travel point, but you can also use main locations like Crater, Foundation, the White Springs and also the Pavia as a fast travel point to get you around a little bit cheaper. Finally, the last tip I have for this video is to utilise the area of loot option when looting enemies as you can search all of them at once at a press of a button rather than going around each body that you've killed. There's a little bonus one kind of off script and everything, make sure to go through your settings as you can actually show your damage numbers and also turn off like screen vibration and stuff like that. That though is 25 tips to get you started in Fallout 76. I hope you found this video helpful, if you did make sure to hit that like button and subscribe for more soon to come. If you have any cool tips that you've found on your travels then make sure to comment them below and help out other players. Thanks for watching, catch you in the next one, bye bye.